Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today Rockstar has added seven brand new survival maps and this makes me really excited because we haven't had any new survival maps ever. And the game came out almost six years ago, GT Online, October 1st, 2013, and they've added brand new survival maps. This is something people used to do back in the day a lot. We used to grind this a lot back in the day before businesses and heists and such, but it's good to know that Rockstar does care about other aspects of the game, that they're not just going to be putting stuff in free mode, but they're also going to be adding new modes like survival which is a co-op mode it's not really an adversary mode it's a co-op mode you can do it solo but you can also play it with friends now in this video what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going through the seven brand new survival maps and I'm gonna be talking about them what I think of these maps personally I'm gonna talk about the good and the bad of these maps and I'm gonna kind of rank them also I'm gonna rank them on a scale of on a scale from three I'm gonna rank them based on worst average and best and these maps this is just my opinion personally okay if you like some of these maps that I say there are worse, that's fine, that's your opinion, but this is just personally how I feel about these maps, and I don't shy away from them. Most of them I like, just a few of them I just had a few problems with. But anyways, let's get started with the video. Starting off at number 7 for the worst one, in my opinion, the worst one is Zancudo. And there are a few things that I do like about this map. Now, the first thing that I like about this map is I like that it's very flat, and you can see where the enemies are coming from. That's probably the best part about this map, in my opinion. But the reason I make this map the worst one is because this map it's so close quartered, it's one of the smallest maps, and the enemy spawns are so random. Even though it seems like there's a lot of places to take cover, in reality there isn't, because the enemy spawns are so random, they will spawn behind you, they will spawn right in front of you, they will spawn on the side of you, um, you can't hide on either edge. If you try to hide on the other edge, they're going to spawn right behind you. I tried to hide on the left side of the map, I tried to hide on the right side of the map, and on both times, they would spawn right behind me. The only real safe place to hide would be right in the middle behind this white trailer here. But even then, even if you are taking cover here, the enemies can still easily flank you, and you're going to be constantly watching your left and your right, and they're going to be rushing you, and the enemies are pretty aggressive in rushing your position. So you're, there's not really one spot that you can see where they're all coming from, and you can continuously hide there. And on this map, helicopters will also spawn at wave 4. And when helicopters spawn, it gets even more challenging because then not only do you have to worry about all the enemies flanking you from all sides, barely enough places to peek out, but also the fact that there's a helicopter on top of you. And in this case, I got wasted by that helicopter. The next worst map that we have is the Polito Forest map, and this map, what it improves from Zancudo is the fact that you can take cover and hide in many more places than in Zancudo. There's a lot more places to take cover in, and I survived here longer than I did on Zancudo. And the enemies, they can flank you, but it's not as bad as in Zancudo. But what makes this map so bad is the terrain. This map is extremely uneven. As you notice, there's a lot of hills, and there's also a lot of trees, which I'll talk about in a moment. That's also a problem. But the fact that the map is just so hilly, there's going to be enemies coming up the hill to attack you, and there's going to be enemies coming from down the hill, which means you're going to have to continuously change your aim. With Sankudo, at least I could aim in a straight line, because I knew the map was flat, and I knew the direction that the enemies would be coming in. But here, it's just so uneven that you're going to have to continuously change your aim and on top of that the bushes oh man the bushes are what makes this map the worst the bushes and the trees all the leaves on this map you can't see well through them there's a lot of bushes that it's really hard to see through them but on the other hand the enemy can see you perfectly through those bushes and they can snipe you so the enemy they have no problem seeing you for all those leaves and all those bushes but you you can't really see the enemy and this is what kind of really annoyed me about this map I don't think I'm gonna play this map anymore Moving on to the next category of survivals, we have the average category. And for the first one here, I want to put in the Stab City Survival. Stab City is basically the Lost MC's trailer park. You guys probably remember this one from a lot of missions. We had the heist mission here. We also had uh, many contact missions here. And I believe there is also a gang attack in this location. And this location, it was pretty good. I liked it that it was flat and I saw where the enemies were coming from a lot of times. And there is a lot of places to take cover, don't get me wrong on this one. There are helicopters which which can get a little annoying, but the reason I put this map in the average category is because if you think about it, it doesn't really offer that much. I mean, it's kind of similar to the Sandy Shore survival, and we've been at this location so many times in the heist missions, and also the fact that there is a gang attack here, so we've experienced this area so many times, and we fought enemies so much here that it wasn't really anything new for me personally. At least that's how I felt about it. 
For the next average survival map, we have the farmhouse survival, and this one you guys will recognize from the O'Neill Brothers house from the single player campaign. And the best part about this map is that there is an interior, there's the house that you can go into. The enemies will sometimes actually spawn in the house as well, or they'll spawn around it. But what I don't like about this map is that there's so many rooms in this house, and because the enemies on the radar, they'll pop in and out of the radar, you won't know exactly where they are, and sometimes you could actually bump into them at the wrong moment and they could kill you. You can go upstairs on the second floor and you can actually take cover right here near the staircase and this is the only way for them to get up and eventually they will come to you but it just gets really boring, really really boring just sitting on the staircase and just shooting anybody that comes up. It's also extremely slow paced. For the first map in the best category, we have the Meth Lab Survival, and this one I could have put in the average category, but the reason I decided to put this one in the best category is because on this map we have the height advantage. There are very few survival maps that actually let you climb on the structures. When you try to climb on the structures, they will tell you to get down, or you will fail the survival, but this one on the other hand, it actually spawns you right on the roof of the Meth Lab, and you can defend it. And I've actually always wanted a survival right near Trevor's Meth Lab, so I think this was a good choice uh, making this map. The one thing I don't like about about this map is that sometimes at certain angles the enemies can rush you you can't really see where they're coming from I don't like that they spawn right behind the meth lab that can be kind of frustrating considering that you're on the roof and they will charge up the staircase they will literally just charge up the staircase just rush right up the staircase even when you're shooting at enemies on the ground then you have to worry about the enemies on the ground and also the enemies coming up behind you fortunately though you can just take cover right behind this um, right behind this air condition and you can just shoot all the enemies that are coming up so pretty easy to get them there but you do have to wait for them to actually come near the door, and sometimes it can take pretty long for them to get near the door. And on the bright side, when a helicopter does spawn, you can just run right inside. You can just right, run right inside, kill all the enemies, and then you can go after the helicopter. The next best survival that we have is the nuclear solo survival, and you guys remember this one from the Doomsday Heist Act 3. It's that same room where you have to hack all four servers before the missiles launch, and this place is a great survival map. The one thing that I could see some people criticizing this map for is the fact that the map is really large. It's the largest out of all the survival maps. It's the hardest to navigate, but you know, I'd much rather have a larger map over a smaller map. The one thing that I found a little frustrating about this map was the fact that you didn't know what level the enemies are on, because there's three levels. There's the ground floor, there's the second level, and the third floor. And for the most part, the enemies would spawn on the second and third floor, but there's still that floor aspect. But other than that, I like this map. I think this map has potential and this map can actually help you out a lot because if you play this survival map and you memorize this area pretty well you will do pretty well in the act 3 heist when you get in this room because this room is a real challenge to get through in the act 3 heist and this map isn't just unique for taking place in the missile silo, but it also is the fact that you're fighting juggernauts. Yes, you don't have helicopters spawn here, but juggernauts will actually spawn and go after you. So I'm really enjoying this map and I'm going to try to see how far I can get on this map. And lastly, for my favorite map, and the map that I consider the best one, is the Grove Street Survival. Now this one, I like so much. I like it for the fact that this takes place in Grove Street, which is iconic, you know, the San Andreas. We're fighting the Ballas here, we're trying to make a last stand. What I like about this map is that this area is flat, we can see where all the enemies are coming from. Oftentimes, the enemies are going to run out right in the middle of the street, they're not going to really use any cover. Very easy to mow them down, and also, oftentimes, you can actually stop enemies before they actually come on the street. If you're really fast, you can run around the corner with an automatic shotgun, and you can just kill them all pretty quickly. And the best part about this map is that even if you get surrounded, there's a lot of places for you to take cover. While there are no interiors like in the other ones, like, you know, the meth lab and the farmhouse, there isn't an interior that you can run into. To, a lot of places that you can take cover and when you get surrounded you can actually run in the backyards of a lot of these houses and the enemies are gonna have a, a very hard time getting you and then you can just sit behind the houses and you can just use an automatic shotgun and kill them I like using the assault shotgun and just spraying it with blind fire mode and if you see right here this backyard that I'm in right here they can only come from one direction they can only come from the fence on my right on the left side is a little wall where sometimes they can peek over and try to take shots at you but for the most part I found it's pretty good to survive here though I am warning you guys sometimes enemies do spawn in this area but when I was taking cover here I didn't really have them spawn on me personally there is helicopters in this level to deal with but I like the Grove Street survival personally I think this is the best survival map but let me know what do you guys think what do you guys think is the best 
survival map? Do you have a different list than me? Do you think some of the maps that I said are worse are actually pretty good? Or maybe you think some of the best maps that I've chosen are even worse. Let me know your opinion. I want to see how other people also feel about these maps. But this was personally my opinion and how I feel about them. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like. And if you're new to my channel, enjoy my content, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.